Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy back end today with another fantasy football video. Today's video is week four running back sit or start decisions. Are you going to be sitting this running back? Or are you going to be starting this running back? Now I go through every single matchup of this week, all the notable running, uh, running backs for fantasy football. So stay tuned for that. Before I start the video, I'd like to ask you, you could please go down below and click that subscribe button because not only does it help me, it's also going to help you guys dominate your fantasy football season. I give you guys videos every single day, countless videos every single week, live stream Thursday night before the games, live stream Sunday morning before the games. Make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell for that. And my Twitter is going to be at the bottom of the screen, NotoriousFNTSY. So let's get right into the video. So the first game to talk about here is the Thursday night matchup of the Eagles versus the Green Bay Packers at Packers. Now, I know this should sound obvious to you. Actually, it may not sound obvious. It may sound kind of scary because to me, both of these guys are kind of scary, but it's obviously scary. Miles Sanders now, he absolutely ate last week. Had one hell of a game. Got a bunch of passing looks, a lot of rushing opportunity. Am I super confident in starting him? Hell no. Will I start him in a lot of situations? Yes. Now, if you have a question about should I sit or start this guy over the rankings, all that, leave it down below. Make sure to include if it's PPR, half PPR standard, I'll easily answer your question. Now, Aaron Jones is also a start. Now, last week we saw that Aaron Jones absolutely took a shit on your fantasy team the whole game, but he scored touchdowns. That's how you, you do good in fantasy. You score touchdowns, and he scored two touchdowns, I believe two whole touchdowns for Aaron Jones. So that really helped his fantasy football value for last week. Now, if he happened to go to not score those two touchdowns, you would have ended up looking at Aaron Jones like he's got a goddamn hole in his head because he ruined your fantasy team. But, 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 but he didn't. He ended up scoring twice last week and ended up being pretty solid for your team. So you probably ended up not too mad when the day came to a close, but you do have to worry about that goal line work. You also have to worry about how much Jamal Williams is being used in this game. It seems like they're getting, it's like a 50-50 target share between Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams, and it should not be like that. Now, Jordan Howard is an obvious sit. Now, the Redskins at the Giants, you're going to be starting up Wayne Gallman and Chris Thompson. Now, Wayne Gallman is not Saquon Barkley. He's not even poor man's Saquon Barkley. He is like Someone, I don't even know. I don't even know how to describe him. He's nowhere near Saquon Barkley's talent, but could he be an RB2 this week? Yeah, he's playing up against the Redskins. He should be able to run all over them. Now, on the Redskins side of the ball, I will be starting Chris Thompson because I think that the Giants are going to be able to get up early. Danny Dimes, Daniel Jones looks pretty fucking good, pretty legit. And while you can't base everything off of one game. You can't base it off of one game, but I think that it'll be pretty solid, and Chris Thompson and the Redskins will be playing from behind, and he's going to get a lot of dump-off passes thrown his way. And we're going to be sitting down AP because I think it's going to be more of a Chris Thompson game, so you'd sit AP. Next game here is the Kansas City Chiefs at the Detroit Lions. Now, I'm going to be starting Damian Williams if he's in. This, this gets a bit complicated, so you're going to be starting Damian Williams if he's in. Darrell Williams. Darrell Williams. If Damian's out, you start Darrell. The two D Williams, you you fucking they're interchangeable. And then LaShawn McCoy, if he's good to go, you play him. And then Carry on Johnson on the Lions, always good to go. Now I know he's just running the ball into a million men. He gets the ball and Matt Patricia sets him up for failure. Matt Patricia puts his pencil in his ear, writes up some type of fucking play, even though you can't write on those sheets with a pencil because it's like laminated, so you can't even fucking write. But he's like, All right, let me figure out how to run Carry on Johnson into the most stacked box you've ever seen in your life. And that's what he does. And Carry on Johnson somehow prevails at the end of the game and scores a touchdown, gets the balls thrown his way, and he just loves those balls getting thrown his way, if you know what I'm saying. But in real life, he likes getting the football thrown to him, and he's going to be scoring those touchdowns for you. I expect a big game out of him this week going up against the Kansas City Chiefs, where Mark Ingram certifiably torched him last week. The next game here is the Titans at the Atlanta Falcons. Now, you're going to be starting up Derek Henry for the Titans last week. Good game. Every single week, it's going to be a good game for Derrick Henry until the wheels eventually fall off of him. Devontae Freeman looked terrible two weeks in a row. Looked pretty good last week. I think he's going to continue looking pretty good. And uh, he's definitely worth a start this week. Next game here is the Cleveland Browns at the Baltimore Ravens. Now, you're going to be starting up Nick Chubb for the Browns this week. Nick Chubb, two good weeks in a row. Week one got vultured by Damian Hilliard. Don't worry about that shit. That ain't happening no more. Two and three. Two and three. Two and three good 
weeks. Now, week four, going to be another good week for him. Mark Ingram, on the other side of the ball, had a million touchdowns last week against the Kansas City Chiefs. As long as Mark Ingram is the starting back, you're starting him in fantasy football. Now, the next matchup here is the Raiders at the Indianapolis Colts. Now, we're going to be firing up Josh Jacobs for the Raiders. I know last week he disappointed, but you know what you don't do? After one week of disappointment, you don't fucking burn him. You don't throw him out the window. You don't curse his name because Josh Jacobs is going to be good. Knock one time if you're with me. Go Raiders. Josh Jacobs is going to be great this week. I'm confident in it. He'll play good against the Colts. And then Marlon Mack is an every week starter as well. No matter how he does the week before, you're going to be firing him up every single Sunday. Next matchup here is the Patriots at the Buffalo Bills. Now the Buffalo Stadium is going to be quite fucking loud, okay? Even Bill Belichick talked about it, how it's just amazing playing there, oh, this, that, and the other thing. Well, he didn't really actually say that because he just, like, murmured for, like, fucking five seconds, and then out, and then that's the quote that shows up after they fucking put the closed caption on there. Now, you're going to be starting James White for the Patriots. Now, I know, Nick, you're thinking... Oh my God, Nick, why are you not going to start Sony Michelle? Oh my God. Well, what the thing is that this is such a goddamn split in carries that I don't even know what the fuck to do. Sit Sony Michelle. Sit Sexy Rexy Burkhead. Because who fucking knows? Every week it's going to be a different one of those guys. James White, the pass catching back, you can start him. Frank Gore now on the Bills. I am worried. I'm very worried. The Patriots defense looks more dangerous than Baker Mayfield. They look crazy. They look scary. I am very scared of this Patriots defense. Frank Gore is a start, but he's a eh. I didn't even write the eh next to him, but he's got that eh. I'm kind of fucking nervous to play Frank Gore this week. And if Devin Singletary is healthy, you're not starting Frank Gore. And I don't even think you're going to be starting Devin Singletary. Next game on the slate, Panthers without Cam Newton going up against the Houston Texans and Deshaun Watson. Now you're going to be starting Christian McCaffrey. You could make that move with your eyes closed. Christian McCaffrey's an every week starter. Week one, amazing. Week two, people are writing me. Oh, he fucking sucks. No one was really writing me, but people are. I saw you on Twitter. People get pissed off. Christian McCaffrey fucking sucks. Oh my fucking God. I can't stand Christian McCaffrey. He's so bad. And then week three, he said, hold my jock strap and went in again. Week four, he's going to go hard in the paint. Week four against the Texans. I'm confident in it. You're firing him up. Now, the Texans. This is just unbelievable. Carlos Hyde gets like nine fantasy points a game in PPR. Do you really want to start him? If you're in a deep league, start him. Duke Johnson looked good week one, week two, and three. Disappeared. Do you want to start Duke Johnson? Probably not. Next game, here's the Chargers at my Miami Dolphins, baby. You're going to be starting Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler is going to absolutely shit house the Dolphins. This is going to be the easiest game you've ever seen. Any team playing the Dolphins, their running backs, their receivers, their coach. You can fucking play their coach, their water boy, the fans. Play all of them because the Dolphins are going to get destroyed, okay? You have to understand this. They're going to fucking throw a net and capture all the Dolphins, okay? They're fucked. Austin Eckler is going to be a great start this week. Now, in a super deep league, I would start Justin Jackson. I think there's potential that the Chargers just sit Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson run some bullshit touchdowns in like uh, Tony Pollard did last week. So I think maybe you could start him. But you're going to be sitting down the Dolphins, Kenyon Drake, Kalen Balaj, all them Dolphins. Now, the next game is the Buccaneers at the Rams. Now, you're going to be starting Todd Gurley with all the caution in the world. Todd Gurley has not put up the numbers people expected. I told you at the beginning of the season, do not draft Todd Gurley. You know what I did? I drafted Todd Gurley in the third round. I saw the value there. In the first or second round, you're probably panicking. You're probably throwing shit out the window because Todd Gurley is not playing up to his expectations. But even against a tough, 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 tough Buccaneers defense... I can't resist but to start him. But you're going to be sitting down Rojo and Peyton Barber. Every week it's going to be a different one of these guys in the backfield doing good. Week two. Oh my god, I'm Bruce Arians. This is going to be the Rojo show. And then Peyton Barber says, fuck off, and just runs like a million yards. And then you think, oh, now it's the Peyton Barber show. And then Rojo says the same exact thing. So who knows? Just don't start either of them. The next game here is the Seahawks at the Arizona Cardinals. Now you're going to be starting Chris Carson, the Seahawks. Now I know he has fumble-itis. That dude couldn't hold on to the ball if you paid him. They actually do pay him to hold on to the ball, and he still can't do it. Rashad Penny is sniffing up his direction. And Chris Carson 
probably is starting to get sweaty. Maybe that's why he's fumbling the ball. But Chris Carson, every game going into the game, he's the starter. And we're going to be starting Chris Carson in a good game against a atrocious Cardinals defense. Now, David Johnson on the other side of the ball should be a start every single week. This is a okay Oh, an A-OK -okay matchup for him. He should be fine going up against the Seahawks. He'll be setting Rashad Penny until he eventually steals that role from Chris Carson because Chris Carson has feet for hands. The next game here is the Vikings at the Chicago Bears. You're going to be firing up Dalvin Cook every single week. This man is torching defenses like it's his job because this just in, it is his job. He's amazing. He's great. Until he eventually breaks his leg or something, knock on wood, knock one time if you're with me. Let's hope Dalvin Cook doesn't get hurt. For all you Dalvin Cook owners, make sure you got Alexander Madison, but you're going to be starting Dalvin Cook this week, even up against a tough Bears defense. Now, David Montgomery, last week, it, or week two, it seemed like, oh my God, praise Lord, Matt Nagy, they're going to run the ball with him on the goal line. And you know what Matt Nagy said week three? We're going to use Cordero Patterson. Fuck Cordero Patterson, and fuck you, Matt Nagy. But you know what? We're still going to start David Montgomery, because David Montgomery is still going to get the most touches on the team. He could still potentially hop in that end zone, and I would feel like a real idiot not starting David Montgomery this week. But we are going to be sitting down Mr. Tariq Cohen. Now with Cordero Patterson stealing some of its touches, stealing some of his targets, I am not confident in Tariq Cohen this given week. Next game is the Jaguars at the Broncos. Now, you're going to be starting Mr. Leonard Fournette, Leonard Fournette. Now, I know, every single week, this guy, last week, he probably would have burned you. But you know what he said? Let me go 69 yards or whatever and score you all your points after I had negative three yards. Now, I know he disappointed at the beginning of the game, but he came through and played okay. This week against the Broncos, not that great of a defense. Not that amazing of a defense anymore. I think Leonard Fournette is a solid start this week. Now, Philip Lindsay last week blew the doors off, blew the top off, played amazing. I told you guys to sit him. It was a wrong decision. But this week, I'm telling you to start him. But he's got the eh next to him because it's just an eh every single week when you start him because who knows if it's going to be the Philip Lindsay of last year or if Rolls-Royce Freeman is going to run up in there and steal half of his touches, steal 60% of the touches. You're going to be sitting Rolls-Royce Freeman, but I don't love starting Philip Lindsay this week. The next game here we have on the slate is the Cowboys at the New Orleans Saints. Now you're going to be firing up Ezekiel Elliott. You're firing him up every week. Zeke's going to eat. If Tony Pollard didn't steal all that garbage time shit, you would have seen a huge game out of Zeke last week. I believe there could be a huge game this week. Alvin Kamara, people were doubting him last week saying he can't do it with Teddy B and Taysom Hill. You know what he said? He said a bad word to you. He said, I can do it, and he did it. Alvin Kamara played great last week. I'm confident in him this week going up against the Cowboys D. You're going to be sitting Pollard. There ain't going to be no garbage time here. Latavius Murray just doesn't seem like someone that you want to be starting. The final game, the Monday night football game, the AFC North matchup that no one wants to see, the Bengals at the Steelers. You're going to be firing up Mr. Joe Mixon of the Bengals. Now I know. I know, I know. Week one, week two, disappointing. Week three, I told you to sit him, and you know what he did? He said, he, he called me a bunch of bad words. He said, Nick, I don't like you. He said, Nick, Nick, I don't know why you told me, everyone to sit me, because I played amazing. And then, you know what I, I said? I said, I benched him too. He was on all my benches. He was on all the benches, and he played amazing, and I lost those games. But this week, against the Steelers, I'm starting Joe Mixon. You want to know who else I'm starting? James Conner, running back of the Steelers. James Conner has not been all that hot. He's been playing mild. Tempo. 10 points every single game. What type of bullshit is that? This week against the Bengals, against a terrible, horrid run defense, I think he's going to absolutely eat like his name was Ezekiel Elliott. You're going to be sitting down Giovanni Bernard. Giovanni Bernard is not useful unless Mr. Joe Mixon is out. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this fucking video. I hope you had an amazing day. I hope you continue to have an amazing day. I hope you click on one of these videos that's on your screen. I hope you come back later and watch the other videos I produce and make for your viewing enjoyment. I hope you enjoyed this video. I tried a little more to add some more humor into this video. I'm sure it wasn't fucking funny at all. I'm sure you think I'm an idiot, but everyone does. So have a great day. I love you all. Good boy!